Hello and welcome to Artificial Intelligence. As always, I'm Bart Massey. As always, I hope you're doing well and staying safe in this very difficult time. Once again, I have the pleasure of introducing Yagana Jalalpur, our TA and our machine learning expert in this course, who's going to talk to you today about various issues that come up when you're thinking about machine learning that can be really relevant to what you're doing. Should be a great talk. Let's give it a listen. Hello, everyone. This is Yegane. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about some of the issues that we face in machine learning. The issues that I'm going to talk about today are sample size, evaluation, overfitting, linearity, data, bad data, and feature selection. So let's talk about sample size first. Machine learning models training always needs a lot of data when being trained. Therefore, having enough samples is essential. So there is a problem with sample size in ML, right? Wanting to see great results with just a few samples is not practical in most of the cases in machine learning models. Some research, um, some recent research have tried to solve this problem of small sample sizes and improving the model performance. You can uh, look at some of uh, the papers in the category of fusion learning or one-shot learning and uh, how, and look at their performance and see the actual results. From the, uh, from the papers that I've looked so far, it doesn't look as promising. And, we want to have enough data, but the question is, how much is enough? There's a whole theory of this, which is outside the scope of this, this course, but um, there's another problem of holding samples outside because uh, they may bring up some issues with the evaluation. These data points can cause problems with accuracy. And uh, also there's a trade-off for how much to train. The more training samples we have, the better the accuracy we get. But is that true? So let's go and look at the, another issue, which is evaluation. We can evaluate um, our model during training by adding uh, evaluation set. It helps us with uh, updating and adjusting the hyperparameters of the model. And it helps with overfitting the data in the training set because we are training with all instances and then evaluating the performance against all instances. And preventing overfitting leads to making a more generalized model, which we are hoping for. So here we, uh, instead of having only the training and test set, we are adding an evaluation set uh, that um, holds out some of the test set data probably. And it is a perfect for brute force learner. Typical method is to hold data out and call it evaluation set. But the problem is that we're going to have less data for training or we may get unlucky with our choices of data in the data that we put in our evaluation set. Another thing that I want to talk about is cross-validation. The idea of cross-validation is to split the data set S into N folds or into N parts of equal subsets. We do this randomly in order to avoid bias. For each subset of SI, as we can see here, we train on the data set S minus SI and evaluate on SI only. We can uh, do statistics on uh, these n differences runs in order to get some kind of minimum, maximum average accuracy. And we do this for um, all the n folds. So uh, imagine M, given M as each sample or observation from our data set, then leave one out cross-validation, tries to test each sample individually. 
In other words, uh, live on out fits the model with M minus one observation and classifies the remaining observation left out. Uh, cross validation is, um, is n times as expensive because we have to run it for n times. As we talked about this in a previous lecture, measure of accuracy. Let's see how accuracy looks like for our binary case. Uh, let's name 0, 0 for true negative, 1, 1 for true positive, 0, 1 for false negative, and 1, 0 for false positive. Uh, once we have uh, counted each of these, we can form various sums and ratios depending on what we want to do. And um, as we have seen before, uh, accuracy is the sum of true negative plus uh, true positive over the total observations. Here is the, is the number of the old cases that we have. Precision uh, is equal to uh, uh, true positive over true positive plus false positive, and recall is uh, equal to true positive over true positive plus uh, false negative. So if you go to, to this link, uh, it will uh, give you a lot more visualized information about accuracy, precision, recall. And um, if you want to get to get more familiar with them, go and check this link out. Now let's talk about overfitting. The next problem uh, that I want to talk right now is this problem of overfitting. You may have heard of overfitting quite a lot because uh, we've been talking about it uh, before. Overfitting um, is one of the type of error that occurs when a function is too fit or too close only to a limited set of data points. Uh, and the problems with overfitting here is losing generalization, as we have mentioned before. Overfitting may fail to fit additional data or future prediction on new data, which is a problem. So as we can see in this figure on the bottom right corner, uh, the curvy green line is too specific. This green line represents the overfitted solution and the curvy uh, black line, as you can see, is, is, like, is like a more generalized solution. And this uh, black line probably is the line that we are looking for instead of having two specific lines. So the problem with the two specific line is that uh, in the future, if you're going to have a new data point, it's, it's not going to have the greatest performance or accuracy. Therefore, if we have a new data set of data to test, we don't need to be worried. Uh, uh, we don't need to uh, be worried about the solution being too specific or not being able to categorize things correctly. So how do we control overfeeding? We can control overfeeding by decreasing the amount of data in training set and also having some principal measures of fit, uh, naive Bayes decision trees, and uh, using a validation set. Holding out more of the data and train on the training set until the performance of the validation set starts to get worse, and then we stop. Next issue that I want to talk about is linearity. So linearity measures how the measured characteristics curve is. And um, think of feature vector as residing in an n-dimensional space. A linear learner can fit an n minus one dimensional plane in that space that best separates positives and negatives. 
uh, from their training instances. When the learner is not linear, it can find more complicated boundaries compared to a linear learn learner. So this is uh, a bigger problem. Linear examples are naive based, perceptron, and nonlinear examples are decision tree, k nearest neighbor. Now let's talk about bad data. Uh, real world training instances will have wrong classification, mismeasured features, missing features. Some data is being missed or even like wrong labels. There are so many, so many like missing things out of the data in the real world that may impact your learner. And uh, the other problem is that algorithms need to be able to cope with this, to cope with all of these problems that we mentioned. Feature selection is another issue. So feature selection is uh, in general the process of selecting a subset of relevant features for using uh, to use uh, to get used in creating the model right so for example we have different features or characteristics that and we want to choose which one to include and which one to not include the reasons that we use feature selections are to improve our generalization, to get a better generalized model, to shorter, uh, shorten the training time, and also for model simplification. So it is rare for a real world uh, inductive machine learning problem to come with instances that have a vector of Boolean features. And uh, choosing the right features makes a huge difference, such as summarizing the information that are useful for classification and leaving out features that can confuse the learner or kill performance. Uh, and imagine having a very random feature like from nowhere sitting in your data set and you're not doing anything with it, but you're going to um, say that is that I'm going to use this random feature to get computed um, for each instance. By, like, so the, the way that to use it is like basically flipping a coin, so it's super random. And this feature will be accidentally correlated with classification of small data sets. So learner will try to use this um, feature and this model that uh, got trained and learned from the correlation uh, of this feature and other features, which is not really helpful for your learner. And it would create uh, the generalization problem again. Feature types. Uh, so Boolean features allow all algorithms, but uh, may lose information. Set values features are only okay with some algorithms require more data to exploit uh, hypothesis space size. And uh, a scalar features only work with a few algorithms, but provide a lot of information. Uh, can always Booleanize a feature. So it's characterized vector for set values, a scalar above or below mean and median, and a scalar by gain a split point. Thank you so much for watching this lecture on machine learning issues. See you guys later. And there you have it. Thanks again to Yagane for presenting this material in a really skilled and entertaining fashion. Again, I hope you all stay safe and well out there. 
thanks for listening to this and we hope to talk to you again real soon